It's not hard to convince people to eat a chicken fingers and fries combo, but it's another thing to convince people to sell it. So how does Raising Cane's keep its employees asking, hey, hey, want some chicken today? One of the most challenging parts of working in fast food is arguably that employees barely ever get a day off. In fact, instead of being able to spend the holidays with their family, staff members will very likely be operating their restaurant stations. This is the case for employees staffing chains like Dunkin' and IHOP, which are, depending on the location, open 365 days a year, but not for those who work at Raising Cane's. As one employee on Reddit revealed, staff members at the Chicken Finger Forward Eatery don't have to work on any of the U.S.'s big holidays. That doesn't just include Christmas and Thanksgiving, but Easter, the 4th of July, and Memorial Day. The Louisiana-born chain's Louisiana locations also closed down for Mardi Gras, which is only right. The restaurant would be doing its heritage a serious disservice if its crew couldn't eat king cake and catch beads on Fat Tuesday. And since the South loves its football, some locations have even been known to close down 30 minutes after the Super Bowl's kickoff so the crew can enjoy the big game. While the fast food industry is notorious for offering minimal benefits to its employees, recently chains have begun to see the error in their limited benefit-giving ways. But as one employee on Comparably noted, citing the chain's benefits were all very good and unlike any they'd had before, Raising Cane's compensation package is ahead above the rest. Aside from promising dental, vision, and life insurance, 401k matching, and paid time off, the chain also offers its employees a phone discount through Verizon and no-cost high school diploma. And if you're a restaurant leader, things get even better. In 2023, the company announced it would chuck out $10,000 in closing cost payments to restaurant leaders who want to invest in buying their first home. The reason Canes spend so much on their employees is simple. They note on their website, we provide competitive benefits and perks to help you be your happiest, healthiest, most chick enthusiastic self. AKA, good benefits are the best way to make their employees want to stick around. Here's another not-so-fun fact about most fast food places. The dress code for employees is usually stiflingly strict. At In-N-Out, all staff members must throw a red apron with a gold apron pin over a white shirt and white pants getup. In the domain of Ronald McDonald, employees need to ensure they pair their McDonald's-sanctioned jeans and belt with a red button-down shirt. But at Cane's, employees have a lot of freedom with their uniforms. One of Raising Cane's crew members in a YouTube video noted, it's kinda nice that you can express yourself with the uniform. According to the employee, although Kane's staff are required to pair a company t-shirt with a solid colored pair of pants, must keep their hair pulled back, and can never be seen without a belt or Kane's hat, so long as they adhere to these basic rules, they can choose the type of pants and belt they wear to work. The crew member noted she herself wore cargo pants on the job. And while the whole company shirt and hat requirement sounds like a fashion drab, the shirts, hoodies, and visors that Canes provides its employees are colorful with fun designs. No wonder crew members at Canes have so much fun showing off their work uniform of the day on TikTok. Fun now comes in shifts is one of the many slogans Raising Cane's uses to recruit new staff members. A little weird? Maybe so. But unlike most restaurants, according to Cane's employees, the chain is not all bark no bite when it comes to its claim that it values a friendly work environment. Just check out employee comments on what it's like working for the brand. One Reddit user reported, it's been a lot of fun and honestly I mean that. Another echoed the sentiment, calling it absolutely worth it. Employees report the fun work culture is in part due to Raising Cane's ensuring its crew members have at least two holiday parties a year. But staff members noted the healthy work environment at Cane's is mostly thanks to the company's commitment to hiring managers and staff members who are supportive of each other. No wonder Forbes voted the restaurant as one of the 500 best major companies to work for in 2021. Raising Cane, y'all. Yeah. Chicken fingers, baby. Mm. Now you speaking my language, you hear me? Do we even have to explain what the best perk of working in the food industry is? What else could it be but the free food? Chains like Chipotle guarantee their staff free of cost eats in exchange for working an entire shift. But for all its fun uniforms and great benefits, as one crew member on Reddit disclosed, Raising Cane's does not give its regular employees free meals. Shocked? So were we. Rather than offering its items to all its staff free of charge, Cane's gives its regular crew members a 50% discount on its famous chicken fingers.
However, the chain does make free food exceptions for two groups. As the same employee noted, if a staff member acts as Calvary at a different Cane's location than the one they're based at, they'll receive a free meal for their trouble. And per another crew member on Glassdoor, managers are allowed to dine on a feast of no-cost chicken every shift. So, based on those little tidbits, it seems to us that raising Cane's whole holding back on the free food thing is a business tactic. The chain appears to use the lure of free chicken combos to inspire employees to want to both move up the ladder and help in other stores that are low on staff. At Raising Cane's, there's only one menu item more famous than its chicken fingers, and that's its sauce. To the horror of Cane's employees, someone has to prepare the sacred dip that comes in everyone and their mother's chicken combo meal. This is why, for maximum efficiency, employees report that one crew member is always on sauce. In fact, according to employees on TikTok, Cane's staff are in danger of spending their entire shift prepping the restaurant's famous dip. And apparently, it's not a station you want to be manning. Typically, when an employee is on sauce, they are required to pump Kane's elixir of legend into cups before capping them off with a lid. Sometimes, to speed this process along, there will be one employee in charge of lids while the other is operating the pump. Aside from being a tedious job, employees report that when working on sauce, the sauce pump is known to break, which can result in the sauce leaking out of the top of the pump. Even more, some employees relayed in the same TikTok video's comment section that there are Kane's locations that do not even have pumps for the sauce. Instead, staff members manually scoop the sauce out. Well, at the very least, we bet employees on sauce duty can confidently skip arm day at the gym. At Raising Cane's drive through simply asking a customer if you can take their order will not do. Hi, our chicken is kicking, our sauce is the boss, and our toast is the most. Surprise! Our fries will cross your eyes. These are just a few of the ways you may be greeted at the chain's drive through But while these catchphrases are, quite frankly, hilarious to hear, according to one employee on YouTube, on the crew member end of things, having to say them can take some getting used to. The employee revealed that, at first, it can be pretty awkward to call out these quirky, TV commercial-esque phrases in real life. However, time both heals all wounds and allows employees to more confidently blurt out these out-of-the-box drive through sayings. As the YouTuber noted, having co-workers who can make this sayings feel like a joke the whole shift's in on is especially helpful. Of course, the employee also noted that the fact that most customers laugh at these phrases when they hear them makes things much less awkward. The current state of the U.S.'s minimum wage is a hot topic, and Raising Cane's is all about staying ahead of the curve when treating its employees with respect. This information actually comes from a former employee, who made a video on TikTok saying they wanted their job at Cane's back ASAP. Why? In April of 2023, Raising Cane started paying all its shift managers $18 an hour, making the chain's average pay $19.50 an hour, significantly higher than most fast food chains. In 2022, a survey revealed that at least 50% of 14 fast food brands' workforce made under $15 an hour. So, as of late 2023, this means Raising Cane's is one of the few fast food chains whose average hourly salary exceeds that number. The reason for this increase is the same reason the chain feels it should give its employees impressive benefits. Although one of Raising Cane's CEOs reported to Yahoo Finance on the significant wage increase, uh, why are we doing this? It's the right thing to do. He also noted that the company views upping its pay per hour as a way to invest in growing its team, and by extension, its profit. Higher than average for the industry wages aren't the only monetary incentive Raising Cane's offers its employees. According to one YouTuber, there are several ways employees can add extra dollars to their salary. Staff members can become certified trainers, which mostly involves watching training videos, to add an extra $2 to their hourly wage. Cane's employees can also become bird specialists, which entails being in charge of the kitchen and involves a more rigorous training process, where they'll be supervised while frying up Cane's famous chicken fingers. Although we were able to confirm how much more a bird specialist makes, we do know the role knocks up the numbers in Kane's employees' paychecks while also giving them the skills they need to become store managers. Also, though the employee didn't mention it in the video, Kane's offers one more way for employees to make a little extra ka on payday. For any time worked past 10 p.m., crew members will be rewarded an extra $1 an hour for their efforts, and they quite frankly deserve it for the night hours they have to work. Wanna know why? 
Usually staying open until well after midnight, Raising Cane's is an establishment where the freshly partied out can drown their sorrows in cane sauce. That also means that employees at the restaurant tend to work very long nights. When working close, Cane's crew members risk not getting off until as late as 3 a.m., which is probably why one former employee declared in a TikTok of a Cane's closing shift, I hated closing. Per the comments of another TikTok made by a few exhausted Cane's night shifters, closing out a day of spreading can be tedious due to the process of cleaning what they deem the bird, likely referring to Cane's grease fryers. Plus, the staff may also need to do an extra time-consuming deep clean if inspectors are coming to check their location in the morning. However, despite the long hours, Cane's employees seem to make the most of the late-night closing madness. On TikTok, some employees have shared videos of their late-night shift breaking out into dance and listening to music while wiping down the kitchen during a close, the epitome of dancing through the pain. I've grown tremendously, starting to, you know, take on other jobs, training people. We're all kind of striving for the same thing. According to employees, Canes usually cross-trains its staff. In other words, while you may be hired to cook, you'll be trained and expected to stand in as a cashier if need be, and vice versa. Even managers need to know how to work and help out with every position in the front and back of the restaurant. As always, there's a strategy behind raising Canes' insistence that it cross-trains its crew. This method for training staff has been around for a very long time because it benefits both employees and employers. By having a cross-trained staff, a raising Canes location will always be able to sustain the flow of its service. If someone calls out sick or if the restaurant is short on staffing, it's much easier to ensure all positions are covered if everyone in the crew knows how to handle every station. In that same vein, since staff members are trained in various roles, they can also build a skill set that will help them in future jobs. So while cross-training may seem annoying initially, it is a win-win for everyone.